Hey YouTube, in this question we're going to find a and b so that this function is continuous. Before we do the problem, let's try to visualize what's going on. So I'm going to graph this function over here on the left. So there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis. So here's x and here's y. And it looks like the first piece is 2 when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So if this is negative 1, we're up here at 2. And so we have a horizontal line, looks like this. And then x is negative 2 when x is greater than or equal to 3. So if this is 3, then negative 2 is down here, so it looks like this. So we want to find a and b so that this function is continuous. In other words, we want to find this green line. We want to find a and b such that this green line connects these two dots. Now, I've drawn this green line through, <laughs> through these points here. I don't know if that's correct, but that's, but that's the idea. The goal is to find the line. So the goal is find line. In this case, all we have to do is find A and B, and that it's the same thing as finding the line. So find the line that connects these two lines to make a continuous function. Okay, so the first piece, the second piece, and the third piece are all continuous by themselves. Right? The question is, when you put them together, is there continuity? So the only places where this will fail to be continuous, perhaps, are at negative 1 and at 3. Right? So we have to force this function to be continuous at those two numbers. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll make sure that the one-sided limits are equal and they exist. So we'll start by making it continuous at negative 1. So we'll start by taking the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. So if you're approaching from the left, you're less than negative 1, so we're using the first piece. When you take this limit, you get 2. We want to make it continuous at negative 1, so now we'll take the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. So this time x is bigger than negative 1, so we're using the second piece. So it's ax plus b. And this would be plugging in the negative 1, we would get a times negative 1 plus b. So negative a plus b, so negative a plus b. So we want the limit from the left to be equal to the limit from the right because we want the limit to exist. Therefore, that tells us that negative a plus b is equal to 2. So that's our first equation. Okay, now we want to make this function continuous at 3. So now we'll look at the limit as x approaches 3. And we can approach 3 from the left, let's say. Approaching from the left means that x is less than 3. So we would use the second piece in this case, so ax plus b. And we can just plug into 3 here so we get a3 or simply 3a plus b. Now we'll take the limit from the right, so x is approaching 3 from the right. Using this limit, uh, that means x is bigger than 3, right? We're approaching from the right, so it's bigger than 3. So that'll be negative 2. And then so here we just get negative 2. We want the limit to exist at 3. That means the one-sided limits must exist, exist, which they do, and they must be equal. Therefore, 3a plus b is equal to negative 2. So we have two equations and two unknowns, and now we'll solve the system of equations. I'm going to go ahead and write the equations over here again. So we have negative a plus b equals 2. And we have 3a plus b equals negative 2. To solve these, uh, one way to do it is maybe multiply the first equation by negative 1. So I'll do that. Multiplying it by negative 1, we get a minus b equals negative 2. This way, when you add the equations, the b's cancel. Again, multiplying the first equation by negative 1 changes the sign. So negative a becomes a, b becomes negative b, 2 becomes negative 2. Now we add, so we get 4a equals negative 4. Dividing by 4 gives us a equals negative 1. Boom, there it is. Now that we have a, we can plug it back in to find b. I'll plug it back into this one here. So that will give us negative negative 1 plus b equals 2. So 1 plus b equals 2. So b is equal to 1. And that would be the value of a and b. So a really quick recap, when you're first doing this problem, you have to make sure the function is continuous everywhere. 
all of these functions individually are continuous. The only possible places where you have discontinuities are at the endpoints, negative 1 and 3. So you make it continuous at each of, each of these numbers. To make it continuous at negative 1, you take one-sided limits and you set them equal. To make it continuous at 3, you take one-sided limits and you set them equal. You solve the system of equations and you get A and B. I'm really, really curious to see if the picture I drew at the beginning is correct. So I'm just going to write a side and, and just check. I'm going to plug in A and B into the line. So let's see, A was negative 1, so it'll be, we have AX plus B. So A was negative 1, so that would become negative X, and then B is 1, so plus 1. So is my picture right? Let's see. When X is 0, Y is 1. Haha, <laughs> yes it is. And when X is 1, Y is 0. Oh, good stuff. So yeah, I got really lucky. Um, I, I drew a perfect picture at the beginning. Uh, that's it. I hope this video was helpful.